Now, before I start this video, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I am not an expert, not a mechanic. If I missed something, leave it in the comments below because I am curious to see what else I missed. These aren't all the problems. These are just the heavy hitter problems. So stay tuned. Enjoy the video. And if you like it, hit that like and subscribe button. The first thing you'll find about these trucks is that they have poor fuel economy. And they do, but they did from trucks of 2007 era, 2008. But from 2008 until now, they get on par with everybody else. You know, I get 13 miles to the gallon unloaded and nine miles to the gallon loaded. And my 2011 6.7 actually got worse unloaded. So, I mean, they do have poor fuel economy, but they have poor fuel economy to trucks of yesteryears. So that's one problem with them or negative. I would really call that one a problem. You don't buy a diesel truck for great fuel economy if you do. Okay. Now these next common problems or big problems all can lead back to one thing. And actually I wrote them down so I don't forget them. You got fuel in the oil, so fuel dilution or oil dilution, cylinder washing, DPF and DPF clogging. So, what does all that mean? It's pretty simple. Fuel in the oil, nope, oil in the fuel, that is a big problem. So, what's happening is these trucks for regeneration mode, they are burning fuel in the 7 and 8 stroke to get that DPF up to about 930 degrees, therefore cooking off the soot. Well, what's happening is there's fuel that's getting through the cylinder it's not being burned it's going through into the oil into losing the oil if you actually go watch my um, oil change video you'll see that oil is kind of watery and it's just fuel in the oil so that's a that's a big problem that's a very common problem and the problem with that is does it causes cylinder washing what's cylinder washing well for you don't know there is cross hatches on the cylinder walls and that holds a little oil deposit so when the cylinder moves up and down it uh or the piston moves up and down it lubricates it well when you take out those cross hatching that uh that lubrication factor goes away and now you got metal rubbing on metal and then you put a lot of heat into it like 1200 degrees or right around there it'll let go and it does and this these trucks are known for melting cylinder seven and eight because that's where the regen happens you dilute the oil yeah, it's gonna happen it's there's no surprise on that DPF clogging. Now, this one is more of a owner's driving habits. So, the worst thing you could do, and that's just this is not just for six fours or Fords. This is all new trucks or newer trucks, 08 and up. If you have a DPF and your truck goes into regen mode, and you shut the truck off, well, now you didn't give the truck the opportunity to clean out the DPF and it's just gonna constantly build up soot and eventually it will clog and it will clog so bad that exhaust gases will come back up and it will create the truck will lose power and it will create all kinds of hell so when your truck goes into regen let it do its thing it's painful for it to do but it's actually better for it than it is not better and then i did a video on what to do when your truck's in regen it's pretty simple just drive it but don't drive the snot out of it because it'll definitely hurt it now to fix those issues those three issues there's one trick you can do and it's delete the truck you know put a tuner on it shut down the egr and the dpf and the regen mode and the truck will run a lot better so for you know don't know what an egr looks like this is your egr valve or exhaust gas return or exhaust gas for circulation basically it's taking exhaust breaking it back bringing it back through the system back in to get reburned Here's an EGR cooler, which has coolant running through it, which runs through the radiator. And then there's another cooler down there, which does the same thing. So it's cooling the gases down to be reburned. Um, doing a delete, we'll take this out, make this elbow a straight 90, take out these coolers, which you put a block off plate right there. And then underneath the truck, you just got to delete the DPF, which is that right there. And if you just put a straight pipe through it or a muffler, now the truck operates as it needs to, like a normal engine, not this crazy science experiment. Doing that will help your fuel economy, limit cylinder washing, and DPF clogging. Obviously the DPF won't clog because it's not gonna be there. So that's how you fix those issues, those issues. 
Now, another common issue with this truck is the radiator leaking. And what I mean by that is, this is where the radiator normally leaks. You got a nice aluminum radiator, the meaning of plastic end cap. So, these like to let go. And believe it or not, this truck only has mm, 77,000 miles on it. It's 12 years old. It's had three radiators in it. I know that because I saw the history report on it. And it's probably because of that that those end caps let go. So, one way to overcome that is buy a Mishimoto radiator, which is all aluminum, nice bigger radiator, and you won't have that problem. So another big issue is cavitation from the uh, water pump. Now, these trucks have a lot going on in the front end. Uh, I mean, if you look at it, you got all sorts of coolers and big radiator and all sorts of stuff going on, which, I don't think it's a bad thing, you know. I want my truck to work nice and cool. Well, you need a lot of volume to push that. So these trucks have a much bigger pump or water pump than the 6.0s did. This is actually, if you look at the breakdown of these, um, a 6.4 and a 6.0 have very similar architecture that um, cavitation in the water pump is a big issue because you got this big massive pump spinning all this fluid it's going to create little air pockets at the very top of it, therefore taking material out, and it's going to eventually eat away at that cover, and when it does, it starts leaking, and then you got to replace the water pump housing. Um, very easy fix how to do that. Ford recognized the problem, and what they did was they came out with an additive that you put in the coolant, and it reduces cavitation, so therefore you don't have the issue. So that's how you fix that issue. You buy yourself a new radiator and put the stuff in the coolant. Now you don't have a leaky radiator or cavitation at the water. Another thing with coolant, and this is, these trucks are sensitive, but I think most modern vehicles are because they're trying to make it so like finely tuned that little things cause big problems. Well, this truck's no exception. Coolant, coolant filters to be more specific. Um, it's a good idea, not a necessity, like I don't have one, but I am going to put one on, is a coolant filter. Um, you know, your coolant does get dirty. It's kind of like oil in a sense, but uh, you want to make sure that when your coolant's passing through all those little passages and all that, that it's not being blocked by anything. And a good way is to just put a filter on it and you just change the filters out like a normal cycle, just like your oil or your fuel. And that would help keep the radiators uh, good shape and then your water pump in good shape so again these are not big issues to fix they just cause big issues if they go unchecked and then the last and final thing is water in the fuel so modern diesels actually modern engines in general hate water in their fuel and water will get in the fuel uh, those tanks sit underground, water fuel's getting pumped in, it's just condensation, it's, it's going to happen. Um, one way to go over is go to a highly used station. If you notice the station has a lot of vehicles running through it, uh, the fuel's not sitting there long, so therefore the water is not uh, having the chance to really set up in one spot. Um, for you those who don't know, the way those tanks work at gas station is actually a big tube going down, and they suck from the bottom up. They actually don't go from bottom down. When I was building gas stations, that's what I learned. But you also don't want to go to a new one because you want to get all that kind of stuff out. But anyway, um, water in the fuel, these trucks really hate it. So do all modern diesels. They actually have a warning light on them now to let you know that, hey, there's water in the fuel. It's a really simple thing to overcome. Um, these trucks were the first generation to have a fuel filter that has a peacock in it that drains water out. And once a month, if you just go to that peacock, which is under the driver's side, I'll show you. Um, you just open it up for about five to 10 seconds and check it. If there's no water in it, you close it up and you move on. Uh, you can also add more fuel filters like the FAS or the Air Dog system, which are great systems from what I've read. And uh, that would help alleviate that issue. So there's the fuel filter. This is underneath the driver's side, basically right where your feet are. This is the little peacock that you would open up. Here's the drain. Uh, once a month, just open that up, let it drain for a couple seconds, check to see if there's any water in it. If there's not, <coughs> close.